only a boy. Have you, have you in, gone in the dark, musky basement of your mind and ever found yourself with a dim flashlight? Batteries almost gone, searching for the right phrase to explain your inadequacies, what you can't do, why you can't do it. Well, let me, because you ain't helping, let me probe a little deeper about your contamination. Have you ever felt that someone else was better than you, that their skin was pretty and yours was ugly, that, that, that their hair was good hair and your hair was bad hair, that their life was better than your life and that they were worth more than you? Yeah. Oh, I know that space, that's familiar territory for me. I know what it is to wonder about my own significance and worth because I have a tendency to suffer from the disease of sometimes caring about what other people think and say on, about me. I have a tendency to dress a certain way and talk a certain way in certain contexts because I want to be seen as acceptable and thereby gain acceptance into a space that someone else has deemed me unworthy to occupy. I am admitting that Sometimes I say to myself that I can't do such and such and so and so because I'm only an insignificant, abandoned, dusty little black boy from the sawdust bottom community of Lima, Arkansas. And oh, my sister and my brethren, I'm almost ashamed to confess to you that I sometimes suffer from loneliness. I consider the stark gravity of statistics concerning our people, we can easily be seduced into ugliness because it appears that our people are the only people that suffer like we do, though official estimates place us at 10% or 12% of the U.S. population, we comprise 50% of the incarcerated persons in the penal system. One in three black men in America is either in jail, has been to jail, or still on paper. And as the American, African American author Michelle Alexander has suggested in her book, which she signed for me, The New Jim Crow, that the U.S. government has instituted a new racial caste system based solely on the incarceration of black and brown people within the prison industrial complex. Our sisters may not be targeted for incarceration, but it seems that we find her to be singled out for extermination. Black women ages 19 through 24 have the, have the fastest rise rising incidence of new HIV infection in the nation. African American women aged 50 or older are right behind them. Real figures for unemployment reveal that black people have an unemployment rate of twice that as white. So excuse me, Waka Flocka Flame, Roscoe Dash, and Wale, if not, I'm not inclined to do it with no hands. My people are suffering from loneliness. Only in this. The room, the room, the room is, is dark like pitch talk. But the fragrance is sweet like frankincense. The spirit is thick. And the young Jeremiah is wrestling with his own sense of onlyness. God is talking to Jeremiah. God's words are, are heavy like lead and they burden the young prophet with the weight of responsibility. God says, before I formed you in the womb, before I formed you in the womb, yeah. And before you were born, I consecrated you and appointed you a prophet to the nation. Have you ever heard God talk mouth to ear? What does it sound like? Did God roar like a mighty cascading waterfall? Or did God whisper like the fluttering wings of a soft yellow butterfly lighting gently on an honeysuckle vine? What does it sound like when God speaks to you? God sounds to me when God speaks to me like me talking to me. Just saying stuff that I would never say. The first thing, the first thing that God says to Jeremiah is at once comforting and frightening. God speaks words that are faith inspiring and terrifying at the same time. God says, I know you. I know you. Yeah. Yeah. 
As a matter of fact, I've been knowing you. <laughs> to be known by God is a good thing, generally speaking, but there is a scary side to being known. The word know here in the Hebrew is yada, which means I see you. I see you. It refers to a deep, profound, and intimate knowledge that penetrates the outer self, the fake self that you show me and that I show you, and reveals the internal self in all of this raw dog ugliness. God says, I know you. I see you. Tell me, but you don't really know me. You don't really know me. See, let me explain something to you. Let me explain. I got bit. And everybody don't know my business. Do you feel me? But God is telling Jeremiah, I know your business. I know what you're really up to. I know what you're really up to. But guess what? I still want to use you. Yeah. 